Welcome back Altoid fans, Scott here, and today we'll be testing the Altoid performance of the new Russian retro-futuristic game Atomic Heart. We'll be testing it in four Altoid and Super Altoid resolutions across five GPUs to see what GPU you really need to run this game. All the footage I'm going to be showing you today is from the first section of the game up until you pick up your very first weapon, so there won't be any spoilers to worry about. Up first I'm going to walk you through my test path, and then we're going to get right into the benchmarks. Due to the aggressive checkpoint in this game, I have to start by running backwards into the level. I will follow these tracks on the ground towards the beginning of the level. I will come upon this enemy from behind and hit him twice with my axe. Sorry about that, Peggy. And then I will run towards the bus in the back. I will aim for this pile of rocks here on the ground. And when I get to it, I will see an elevation change in my camera and then turn the camera around. Now I'll run back towards where I was. This game is being tested on my test bench featuring an AMD R7 5800X3D with 32GB of 3200Hz DL14 memory on Windows 11, running NVIDIA's Game Ready Driver 528.49 and AMD's Adrenaline 23.2.2. When I get here, I run past this tree shadows, I stop and then I look over to the giant metal snake. I follow its path through the sky, and by the time it hits the ground the run has ended. And then I do this again two more times for a total of three runs for each resolution and setting. My variance between runs is 1% or lower. At our most popular ultrawide resolution of 3440 by 1440 we are seeing great performance from all the GPUs without any need for upscaling. Starting at the top of the stack, we see the RTX 4090 delivering very high refresh rates of 148 FPS for its average, and high refresh rates of 94 FPS for the 1% low. With DLSS quality only adding an additional 28 FPS, the 4090 may be hitting a CPU or game engine limit with DLSS on. We see our RTX 4080 and RX 7900 XTX are at a practical tie with the average frame rate of 117 and 115 FPS but the 4080 does have an advantage at the 1% lows, where we see 79 and 70 FPS. DLSS and FSR are also very close at 151 and 147 FPS, and the 4080 has a similar advantage at the 1% low, with the cards coming in at 97 and 85 FPS. And moving down a tier, we see another performance tie for the averages, with both the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti coming in at 96 and 94 FPS. With the 1% lows, we see another advantage for Team Green, with the cards getting 60 and 66 FPS. With DLSS and FSR on, we see both scale up equally for 130 and 127 FPS averages, and 1% lows of 76 and 84 FPS. At this resolution, no card needs to bother with DLSS or FSR, as all are getting high refresh rates or better, and no 1% low dips below 60. Considering the very clean retro modernist design language used in the game, I prefer a native presentation to the slight softening that DLSS and FSR cause at this resolution, where upscaling detracts from the visuals way more than they do in a gritty, realistic game. If this is your resolution of choice, pick the card that fits your budget and enjoy. If you'd like to see even more GPUs in these graphs, then please subscribe to help this channel hit its monetization goals so we can buy new GPUs day one. We don't see much of a performance hit moving to our 3840 by 1600 ultrawide resolution. The RTX 4090 is still delivering very high refresh rate averages of 136 FPS and 1% lows that are now at a smooth 88 FPS. And when DLSS quality is on, we see results that are nearly the same as we did at 3440 by 1440 with a 171 FPS average and the exact same 1% low of 107 FPS indicating that yes, we indeed had hit some kind of bottleneck. The CPU performance graph from Task Manager shows 6 threads with heavy use and 10 with light use, with a few of the heavy threads getting near maxed for a moment but never quite hitting 100%. The RTX 4080 and 7900 XTX stay tied delivering high average frame rates of 104 and 103 FPS with smooth 1% lows of 72 and 64 FPS, still giving the NVIDIA card the lead here. And more ties for DLSS and FSR, with both delivering a 139 FPS average and 1% lows of 91 and 80 FPS. Again, more ties at the average and advantages at the 1% lows when we look at the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti. 
with their average performance coming in at a smooth 84 and 83 FPS, and the 1% lows dipping into an acceptable 55 and 59 FPS. For a still smooth feeling experience on any variable refresh rate monitor, with FSR and DLSS on, we see a similar performance spread with 118 and 115 FPS for the average and 71 and 78 FPS for the 1% low. Again, we see all cards providing performance that you don't need DLSS or FSR to enjoy. Though, if you have to have your 1% lows over 60, then DLSS and FSR will deliver the extra performance you desire. Moving to our 5120x1440p Super Altwide, we see all of our cards still putting in respectable performances. The RTX 4090 comes in just shy of the very high refresh rates with a 119 FPS average and a smooth 1% low of 77 FPS. The DLSS results are finally unbottlenecked and we see a 158 FPS average and a 101 FPS 1% low. Do I even need to mention it's another tie for the average between the 4080 and the 7900 XTX? They both deliver a smooth 89 and 88 FPS and 1% lows of 62 and 57 FPS, with the XTX dipping into acceptable territory. DLS and FSR take things back to very high refresh rates with both cards getting 127 FPS and 1% lows of 84 and 75 FPS. There's another meaningless performance difference between the 7900 XT and the RTX 4070 Ti, with them still providing smooth averages of a 71 and 70 FPS and acceptable 1% lows of 47 and 50 FPS. Still a fine play experience before even using FSR or DLSS, but when we do, we see high refresh rates of 107 FPS and 102 FPS, and smooth 1% lows of 65 and 70 FPS. Even at this resolution, none of our GPUs are really struggling. Sure, you'd be a little bit more tempted to use upscaling, but that's a small visual sacrifice for some pretty strong frame gains. And finally, we have our 5120 by 2160 Ultrawide, where we actually see some cards fail to hit 60. The RTX 4090 is still a beast, trucking along with a smooth 88 FPS, and not even letting its 1% low out of smooth range with a 62 FPS average maxing out what any existing monitor at this resolution could achieve. So, looking at the DLSS results are just an academic exercise, where we see very high refresh rates of 129 FPS and smooth 84 FPS 1% lows. Ooh, look, a marginally different result. I mean, it's still a tie for the average between the RTX 4080 and the 7900 XTX of 69 and 71 FPS, but the XTX is no longer lags behind at the 1% low with a 51 and 49 FPS respectively. When DLSS and FSR are used, we see 106 and 115 FPS averages, giving the XTX a slight advantage here, but they are tied back up with the 1% lows of 73 and 70 FPS. We see a similar shift with our 7900 XT and 4070 Ti, with the average technically in slight advantage territory for the XT at 57 and 54 FPS, and pretty even for the 1% lows with 38 and 40 FPS. At this resolution, FSR and DLSS are going to be a welcome FPS boost and much less of a visual hit. We see our averages coming in with a modest advantage for the 7900 XT with a high refresh rate of 92 FPS to the smooth refresh rate of 84 FPS for the 4070 Ti and an effective tie for the 1% lows of 59 and 60 FPS. All these cards run well enough that only the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti even need FSR and DLSS at this resolution, and once turned on, they provide a very nice play experience. And at this resolution, the upscaling effect is much less noticeable than at the lower resolution. It seems the worries about Atomic Heart's performance were a bit overblown, at least until the ray tracing patch comes, if it ever does. If you're buying a GPU just to play Atomic Heart, well, I think you're being a bit short-sighted, but I'll continue with the premise anyways. If your goal is to play Atomic Heart the best you can without wasting any money, then there are only three GPUs you need to be considering, and those are the RTX 4090, the RX 7900 XTX, and the RTX 4070 Ti. If you buy the 4080 or the 7900 XT, then you're just spending more money for no real extra gain in performance. Now, you just need to decide which of these three GPUs provides the performance you want at the price your wallet can bear. As a general rule of thumb, the 4090 is a bit of overkill 
with a 3440x1440p ultrawide. The 7900XTX is in the performance sweet spot where it does well at every resolution without being overkill or underpowered. And the 4070 Ti should probably be avoided on our 2160p ultrawide, even though it doesn't run into the issue here in this game. Its low video memory hurts it in other titles at this resolution. This game has a very pleasing clean retro modern aesthetic that I feel blends perfectly with the Soviet Union propaganda theme of this game. This game was famously featured in an Nvidia showcase of upcoming ray tracing games, but is shipped without any ray tracing. As far as I have seen, there has been no explanation from the developer as to why, or a date for when it will come. Even without ray tracing, this game is quite good looking, and even the reflections are quite nice on atomic settings. Though, in some areas you can see them updating less frequently than the rest of the scene. The level of detail and unique architecture that emphasizes the themes make this game a pretty game to behold. Thanks, Einstein. What would I ever do without you? If you want to see any of the GPUs featured here tested in 10 other games or see what their ray tracing performance is, please check out my other videos where I go into depth on these subjects. And if you want to see more new titles tested at ultrawide resolutions, please like and subscribe to catch all of my new upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.